Okay, so I think it's uh, time to get uh, started. So hello everybody, my name is uh, Sakari Posa. I work for Intel and uh, I, uh, I'm a software architect in the uh, Intel Open Source Technology Center. I'm uh, based in, uh, in Finland. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, JavaScript for IoT. So I'll uh, explain a little bit the background, what is IoT, what is uh, open source, uh, in, uh, open in interconnect consortium, OIC for short, what is the relationship to this uh, IoT, uh, what is the relationship to the JavaScript, the nodes, and, and, and finally to the uh, uh, cloud APIs. But before going into the uh, details of, of all of those, uh, here's a, a kind of a vision picture uh, or diagram what we want to achieve. And, and by we, uh, I mean the, uh, the web team in, in Intel, uh, Intel as a whole as well. And then uh, I think the, uh, based on what I'm seeing here and, and, and in the industry in general, I think, uh, uh, this applies to, to the uh, theme, what's, what's going on in, in industry. So the, in the IoT world, we have, you know, it's a, it's a complex area, but trying to simplify it, you have those uh, smart devices, sensors, and, and, and things like that. And then you have a whole bunch of protocols uh, that these uh, uh, smart devices are, are trying to talk to each other. Then you have uh, some sort of a gateways in between, and then you have the, the cloud and, and, and the mobile uh, and, and desktop devices accessing the data. So in, in, in the uh, um, clouds, in the upper uh, side of the picture, the, the REST APIs are, are pretty much the, the common uh, type of mechanism to, to access this type of data. In the smart devices area, uh, there's, as I said, there's a whole variety of, of, of protocols, and, and usually they don't interoperate between each other. So really the, uh, the vision here is that uh, we should be able to use JavaScript for everything, meaning that uh, you can uh, uh, use JavaScript to program your uh, tiny little sensor. You can use JavaScript to do the, the gateway functionality the clouds, everything. So that's the only skill set is JavaScript and, and web technologies in, in general. So with that, I'm not saying that that's the only model. This is just enabling the web um, developers to innovate on, 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 on the IoT. And uh, you know, the, the, <coughs> the, the reason for this type of uh, visioning is that uh, you know, in the past, the the IoT used to be a fairly complex area where only a handful of embedded developers with the strong C and hardware capabilities and, and skills were able to, to do. And, and there's only a handful of those experts. But with the recent you know, uh, mobile and, 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 and web technology uh, apps and, and uh, uh, the, the developer pool in, in the mobile and in the web, it just, you know, order of magnitude or two bigger. And typically those people have the JavaScript and web technologies uh, skills. So what we are trying to do here with the vision is to address those uh, millions of developers. So then uh, diving into the uh, Open Interconnect Consortium, OIC. So, Here's the list of the, or a partial list of the, the companies who've joined the consortium. It's been running like a year and a half now. So this is serious business. I mean, these companies have agreed that, you know, the IoT, we have a problem of interoperability. And, and with the OIC, the, the goal of that one is to create interoperable products from these ones. And, and we will start to see products on the market uh, pretty soon. I hope. And uh, so Intel, Samsung, GE, and Cisco are the, uh, the top players there, but there's a whole bunch of uh, others. And, uh, and, and, and this is you know, one uh, kind of a consortium trying to address the interoperability problem. 
And other ones are uh, like uh, Google with the Weeb uh, initiative, uh, Apple with the HomeKit, and uh, the All Seeing Consortium. And what the uh, OIC is, is doing, um, on the left-hand side, you have the, the responsibilities of the, of the OIC. So what it does, it, it creates specification, a protocol specification, a really detailed uh, description how the devices should operate in order to be compliant. They also defined uh, data models for uh, different verticals. The most complete one is, is the Schmidt Home right now. So they have a JSON specification that how, how a, a light bulb or a switch or you know, there's like you know, hundreds of them, how do they, what type of properties they have and, and, and how do you control and, and, and modify the, uh, the properties of the, of the device. And then the certification and marketing uh, activities. The IoTVD uh, there on the, on the right, uh, that is an open source project uh, implementing the, the OIC protocol. And uh, so <clears throat> just about a couple months ago, it received the, the 1.0 release, which means that it's production ready. Uh, there's, uh, there's QA and, and uh, certain uh, API bindings like C and C++ and Java. But uh, there wasn't anything for JavaScript. So that's um, where the Intel uh, web team came in and, and, and started to do um, uh, the enabling the, the web developers on, on, on this OIC ecosystem. So what we did what was that uh, um, we took the nodes, the IoTivity project, create the JavaScript bindings, and uh, we created the IoTivity node project. It's available in the, in the NPM and in the GitHub as well. And uh, we have a, a JavaScript API uh, for the OIC. We have the formal uh, API specification in the form of the IDL. And uh, it's a single API. The node is just one implementation. We have, uh, um, or we'll have uh, uh, one in, uh, for the crosswalk for, for the Android. And then uh, Cisco actually did that for, for Tizen operating system as well. So it's, uh, with the single API, you, you should be able to try get uh, multiple type of devices. It's all open source, and as I said, uh, it's, it's based on the, the latest uh, production ready um, IoTivity code. And the, the theme of the, uh, the API is, is really simplicity. The OIC protocol itself, uh, it's, it's a fairly complex. It's, it's using uh, IP multicast and, and, uh, and on, when it's on top of the, uh, the IP stack, it also runs on top of uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, low energy and it's hiding all the protocol complexity but still uh, it is a, a fairly complex uh, system to use. But uh, so what we did was that uh, we tried to simplify and hide the complexity of the product operation from the, uh, from the developer. And in, in the OIC uh, world, uh, the, on, on the right hand side, you have the OIC server. So that's actually the, the data source. So the sensors, light bulbs, and you know, ovens and, and switches, what you have. So what it's doing on a server side, uh, you, you use this register method to register what type of uh, uh, properties you have. Like, uh, you know, I have a, if I'm a light switch, I, I, I have an on-off property. If I'm an oven, you, you can have a multiple uh, levels of, of, of properties. And, uh, once you've done that, uh, the client side can start discovering and, and, and reading your, your properties and, and, and setting and, and uh, controlling you. And all you get is uh, these events. So somebody is retrieving or updating or start observing your resources. And uh, then you need to write a little bit of JavaScript on top of those event handlers. On the client side, uh, so that's kind of the, the gateway or the mobile device who is trying to figure out <coughs> who are there on my network. So the discovery is the first thing you do. 
and for that we have the uh, uh, the find resources and uh, uh, you issue that command and then you start uh, uh, getting events that the resource is found and then what type of resource and then once you found what you're looking for you issue this retrieve update or observe uh, um, methods so this is how the uh, the discovery work so on the left hand side the, the, the clients for example a mobile phone running the uh, our bindings or this could be a node uh, gateway as well so it's issuing the discovery so that's an IP multicast or a BLE uh, packet into the network so what you really do on, on, on the client side is that uh, <coughs> you you require the, uh, uh, the OIC and uh, you have two roles the client and the server the server is the default one and then you get the device object and then you start issuing the, the, the methods so you find resource and then uh, you get an event that okay resource was found you get multiple of these ones depending on uh, how many uh, uh, sensors or, or servers you, you found on the network then on the uh, on the server side uh, you do the same require statements and and, and you register your uh, uh, resources so you said uh, what, what is my uh, uh, URL uh, what type of resource these are all the uh, OIC specified uh, uh, properties whether I'm uh, responding to the discovery and and these what are my properties so in this case it's just you know an on property and that's basically with these you are done with the with the discovery so the next thing is what the client wants to do is to retrieve some data from the sensors and uh, perhaps update uh, the property turn something on and off and, and uh, so similarly uh, you <coughs> on, on the event handler uh, you issue these retrieve and update uh, methods and uh, uh, just with you know 10 15 lines of code on both sides you are able to create a interoperable uh, uh, client and, and, and server with, with, with JavaScript and uh, so we spent quite a lot of time with the semantics and, and uh, uh, developer uh, feedback on, on, on these APIs and, and, and we feel that they are in pretty good shape right now so so this is for the uh, the local network but then uh, what about the clouds so the, uh, the discovery doesn't work over the cloud or internet because the lack of multicast and, and, and things like that. So there's uh, multiple ways to tackle that problem. Uh, one is to uh, these, these REST APIs, which I'm gonna talk about. Um, the OIC itself has um, uh, other uh, mechanisms as kind of a, a proposed or, or um, uh, supported mechanisms directly in the stack so that's a co-app over TCP and XMPP I'm not going to talk about those but just for the reference so this uh, uh, rest API uh, the way it works we have actually a node uh, module for that one as well it's called IOT rest server rest API server and uh, it's in a github as well and what it's doing it's actually using these uh, 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 APIs that I just mentioned and it's uh, 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 so what it's the, the service that it's providing it's uh, uh, sitting between uh, the, the OIC network which I just uh, talked about and, and the cloud and, and the, the, the clients in the cloud can issue uh, uh, rest calls to the server and it's translate those to the uh, local network and, and response back so I'm not going to go over all these uh, uh, <coughs> uh, transactions, but basically it's just an uh, uh, HTTP GET, and these uh, uh, URLs or paths are defined by the um, uh, OIC uh, specification. So the OIC slash REST is uh, uh, the discovery, and, and what then uh, the REST server is, is doing using the JavaScript APIs 
on, on the uh, local network to issue the, uh, uh, the discovery. And what you get back is uh, a JSON data, which is then relied, relied back to the uh, uh, HTTP client. Similarly, uh, you, you do get on, on the URL or a path which you get uh, doing the discovery. You get the data, the, all the properties. So in that case, the properties, uh, you have the lights, the properties on. Uh, is, is false, and then finally you can use the put method to, to, to change that to something else. Really straightforward uh, kind of a translation. Why this is so easy is that the OIC protocol itself, it's uh, following the REST model, so it's uh, stateless. You, you issue a request and you get a response back. And uh, the the REST API server that I mentioned that I talked, uh, it's, it's all JavaScript based on Node, Express server, and the IoTVD node bindings, uh, open source. And what you can do it right now is to do the discovery uh, and then this uh, retrieve and update, observing. The observing uh, mechanism is something that uh, uh, you said that uh, I want to observe this resource and what it does is that uh, every time there's a change in the resource, you'll get a call back or, or notification back. So you don't need to poll. So that's, that's the purpose of the observing. Uh, the future, next steps, what we need to solve or uh, uh, work on is, uh, security and uh, by that what I mean is is the uh, the sandboxing capabilities in the uh, in the browser worlds uh, the the v8 and and the uh, the browser uh, the chrome in this case is it's uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, operations and sandboxing in order to uh, ensure that the uh, the, the browser or the website is not doing anything nasty. In a node, um, according to my understanding, uh, we don't have anything in this space. I just heard uh, that uh, something might be cooking, but this is definitely a big gap, at least uh, in our books. The next one is the uh, uh, going to the low-end devices. Uh, V8 is, is meant for desktop size browsers, and a single instance of uh, V8 is using around 10 meg of memory with, just with the Hello World uh, application. But if we want to really go down to the uh, you know, sensor level, having JavaScript running on the you know, whatever small home uh, sensor you have, that's too much. And, uh, even though there are uh, attempts to uh, replace the V8 engine, I think Microsoft is going to talk about that one later today. Uh, Samsung has created a, a node-compatible IoT JavaScript uh, uh, engine. That's all nice and, and useful, but the problem with that is that you lose all your uh, native modules because those are uh, written against the V8. Like our uh, uh, IoTVD node bindings, so if we move to something else, we need to rewrite the uh, uh, the module. So what I'm really uh, looking for is a, a, a shim layer, a, a JavaScript engine API, whatever you call it, which would isolate the node from the JavaScript engine. So you write against that API uh, your modules and you should be able to swap out, swap in different uh, JavaScript engines there. And once again, uh, uh, the Microsoft talk will hopefully uh, resolve this issue long term. We are definitely supporting this type of uh, activity. Finally, uh, there's, uh, we have a booth just uh, outside this door. Uh, so if you're going <clears> to <throat> see this, uh, uh, all this in action and more, uh, please visit the um, 
the, our booth. Uh, it's running this uh, smart home demo where you have a bunch of sensors, you have a, the gateway, and you have a 3D model of the house written in uh, WebGL, which looks like exactly like this one. So with the UI, you can control the, uh, the sensors. It's, it's talking to the gateway, and the gateway is talking with the uh, sensors via the uh, OIC protocol using the JavaScript APIs. Everything is, uh, all the, uh, the, the application logic, the business logic is done uh, with the uh, uh, JavaScript. So it's really uh, easy to, to use and, and understand. And uh, it's actually working uh, uh, pretty well. So please go and visit and uh, talk with the guys who has this similar type of uh, shirt that I'm wearing. And uh, so with that, I think uh, the red light is blinking. I'm over time. Uh, so I don't have time for questions. But as I said, I'll be at the booth. Please join us there, and, and we can talk more. Alrighty, thanks for coming. <laughs>